Hello! In a previous video, we showed you how to serve Llama 3.1405 billion parameter model on a GKE cluster using an open source project called LWS. Today, we have one of the maintainers of LWS and many other open source Kubernetes projects. Welcome to the show, Abdullah. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Abdullah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an engineering TL on the GKE team. Um, our maintainer of several projects uh, in, in open source, including co-chair of six scheduling, other projects that I've been involved with and started, including Q, job set, and the latest one is leader worker set, uh, which is the topic of this, of this episode. Nice to meet you, Mofi. For the people watching and who have not heard of leader worker set, if you had to define and describe leader worker set in a few sentences, how would you do it? Leader worker set is focused mostly on the serving type of workloads, spe specifically serving large models. It basically extends the deployment API, not necessarily extends it itself, but builds a similar API to deployment API, but for what I call a super pod. So in the deployment case, each pod represents a single replica, a single replica that runs a server, be it like a web server or a single host uh, model server, for example. With LWS, the problem that tries to solve is serving models that cannot be loaded on a single machine. And so we need the concept of a super pod, basically, that runs on multiple machines, presented as a distributed server. So if you remove all the complexities at the bottom layer, it is actually like a deployment, but a deployment of super pods, where each pod is basically a group of pods running on multiple machines represented as a unit. So Abdullah, in Kubernetes and pods, pods are already made up of multiple containers that can work together to serve one application. So why is the need for a super pod of multiple pods working together? So th that, that's a good question, Mofi. Currently in Kubernetes, you can indeed define multiple containers within a single pod. However, those containers must be running on a single machine. So you are still constrained by the resources that are available on a single machine. And so if you are running on an A3 machine, for example, even if you consume all the GPUs on that A3 machine, you're still limited by eight GPUs. Each one has 80 gigabyte. And so you're constrained by 640 gigabyte of memory. And so multiple containers are not going to allow you to run on multiple machines. They will allow you to represent the pod as multiple processes, but not run in a distributed fashion. And this is the problem that, or the limitation of presenting these things as a single pod that LWS tries to address. That makes sense. But could you show us how LWS is either working in a more of a, like a practical sense or like some diagram? Yeah. As you can see from the conceptual view, we've basically extended or represented a super pod as a group of pods. In the diagram, you can see that LWS manages multiple groups of pods. Each group represents a single unit of scaling, failure, and failure handling. The group is represented as a single leader pod and a group of worker pods. This is a common pattern for most distributed serving frameworks where you have a leader pod acting as the facade of this super pod. So it's where the actual HTTP endpoint, for example, is running. It's the pod that is receiving the request and then churning work, distributing it to the workers, collecting all the results back, and then responding back to the load balancer, for example, or, or the, the client. LWS is going to handle that group of pod as I mentioned as a unit. And so when you have, for example, horizontal scaling set up, when it needs to scale up another replica, it will call the scale sub resource in LWS. What LWS is going to do is basically create an additional group. So right now you have, for example, on this diagram, three, four groups, it will create group number five. So that's like conceptually how this thing works. So in this group of pods that are working together, you mentioned the failure recovery. Uh, how does that work out in practice? Let's say my group two in this example, just machine got disconnected or died for any number of reasons. Like what is then uh, leader workers are doing to recover from that state back to normal? That's a great question. So as I mentioned, LWS treats each group of pods as a single unit. 
And so the assumption here is that that distributed model server requires all its pods to be up and running to actually be able to make progress. And so when any of the pods fail, be it for hardware failure of the machine that where the pod is running, or because the pod itself ran into out of memory, for example, and it failed, what LWS is going to do is restart all the pods. That's the default behavior. That's mostly because most of the frameworks that implement distributed or multi-host serving, be it like PyTorch or JAX, um, they do not have the capability to simply restart by restarting the failed process because they usually work in lockstep. And so all the pods have to restart so that they go back into a known state and then continue to make progress. LWS does this by basically recreating all the pods. And so if a machine failed, and then we assume that the infrastructure is going to bring up a replacement machine for that failed one, that group is going to be get rescheduled, and then the failed pod is also going to be uh, recreated and be scheduled on the replacement machine. Could you tell uh, us a little bit more about like what is the usage of the stateful set and where does it fit in? So one important design principle that we've been adopting with several other projects is not to reinvent the wheel. And so we're building our new capabilities by composing or new APIs by composing it from other APIs that are known to be working very well. In this case, stateful sets. The way that LWS is like works is that when you create an LWS, a leader stateful set gets created. That's the stateful set that you can see at the top. Now for each pod that this leader stateful set creates, another stateful set will be created to represent the workers of the group that this pod leads. And so as you can see in the diagram, each group of pods or each what we call LWS replica is going to be represented by a single leader managed by the leader stateful set and a group of workers represented by another stateful set owned by the leader of that group. Now, the question is, why are we using stateful sets? As you may recall, each group represents a distributed model server. There are two main features that are needed for distributed model servers to work. One is network discovery. So the, pod, the workers that we created, they work as a unit. They do communication as well, and so they need to know each other. With stateful sets, as you may know, the pods are created with a stable pod name that can be used as a stable DNS host name. This is a lot of information. I think like people probably need some time to kind of conceptualize all these things for themselves. So what would you say people should do if they want to learn more about LWS? So to learn more, please visit LWS GitHub repo. It's a sub-project under the Kubernetes repository. I'll also have a talk on LWS presenting other features like how LWS supports disaggregated serving. This talk is going to be on the second week of November at KubeCon Salt Lake City. If you're watching uh, this video after KubeCon, you're going to find a link to that presentation in the description of this video.